not be showing you right now, but there you go. There is, there is the main website that you can go on to. So the first little bit, you know, we gotta we gotta give you the the silent version. We gotta give you the look of the game, gotta give you the look of the website. We got to give you the look of the the schedule here. So welcome all in, guys. What a great treasure trove Tuesday. Laptop hound here, I think. I'm hoping if I'm not muted, I'm I'm visually impaired and I can't I can't see myself on screen, but we made it. We made it. It's Tuesday. This is my third show in 24 hours. So, you know, bear with me. I, I, I'll get through it. Lots to go through. Historical Tuesday. We've got some Expos talk. We've got some Dave Steve talk, of course, and uh, a community guest coming on talking about his way of modeling the game that we haven't quite seen in the community before. So that will be fun to talk about and see how successful it's been. It must be successful because he's currently in Diamond right now and doing fairly well. Thank you, Spore, for the raid over from OOTP. And if you didn't get all your drops, tune in to TJ tonight at 9 o'clock, and you can pick up from where you left off. If you're at 90%, 92%, or as I saw, Kava, probably at 99%. He's at the Wayne Gretzky percent. He's almost there. So tune in tonight, and you can finish those drops off. And of course... Looking forward to that gold Robertson card. I think he can be added to my gold team. Looks like he's going to be pretty good in the bullpen. So I'll be definitely trying to pull that one at some point in time. All right. Pops down. Goria here. Chess Safari is here. We got Don't Cut the D Block Dragon. We've got Spore. Is there sound? We are sound. Are we good? Do we have sound? I, lo I think I have sound, right? Do we have a, a Twitch glitch? Because everything's working on my end. Yeah, we're working okay. Okay. All right. Good. Good. Because I don't want to have to repeat all that again. Uh, also, if you want to request a card for Spores Tuesday Treasure Trove, you can do that simply by filling out the form that I'm going to attach here. So again, let's uh, send this out to you guys. Got 20, 29 people that have filled this out so far. Again, no guarantee that uh, Spore can create that card, but sometimes he's looking for some community requests. I've sent them off a few already, and uh, I will send them off the ones after the show here today. Again, we've got 29 all the way from Tom Brunanski to Bill Swift to Dick Schofield. Yeah, you guys have some great ideas. And again, most likely these are going to be iron, silver, uh, cards that might not be part of the meta, and that's perfectly fine. Put down the player you'd like to see, the team you'd like to see, because there was some controversy today. Colorado, Chicago. Colorado, Cubs. Colorado. Cubs. So if it's a specific team you want to see your player from, or even the year that you might want to see the player from, just fill that all out and we'll get it into a Spore and you might just see your card created on a future Tuesday Treasure Trove stream. That's a lot of T's in there. Uh, don't forget to tune in Thursday, Thursday before Dish comes on or the second Pre-game show. Yes, the Three Amigo show will be on Thursday. Myself and EVC. And not sure who the third Amigo will be. If, if Spore is available, he is definitely welcome to come on. And uh, we should, I think, haven't had confirmation yet, but we should have a new pre-release. Yes, we get to show off one card that uh, won't be on Dish's stream. So last week it was a guy named Home Run. And uh, who knows? I don't even know who it will be this week, but tune in on Thursday at 11 a.m., 45-minute show, and then we'll raid right into DishNet and uh, see what the new cards are this week. I don't think there's been a teaser yet for this week's set. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think we've had a teaser yet. Last week, it was, of course, the NEL4, Oscar Charleston. Did you get your Oscar? Is he playing in your outfield? Did you get your Bill was a Bill Foster 
pitcher. Uh, yeah, some great cards, and I can't wait to see this set coming out this week. Uh, I think I think you're going to be I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised over the next couple weeks at the cards that are going to come out. Again, just a huge shout out if you missed it yesterday. Uh, Re-upping their subscriptions last week. D King three ninety five nine months boiled egg six months. Sean Paxler three months and Cedar rates to with uh, the first month on the channel. Thank you guys for supporting me and for supporting all the affiliates out there. We absolutely love bringing you guys as much content as we can. Uh, Tuesdays is usually Babe in the Matrix. That series ended last week. A uh, new series will come out probably in a couple weeks before uh, the, you know, the, before the end of the month. And I'm hoping that uh, I can get some help on the first one from a guy that you just watched, Spore. He's unaware of this, but I'm hoping he can help me kickstart this series because it's something he's kind of an expert at and, and we see him doing a lot on his stream. So I'll have to get in contact with him. But yeah, Babe is retired now, had a great, great, great career in 2023, except in Miami. But hey, you know, the weather, the 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 beautiful scenery, you know, probably the babes for Babe in Miami that he had to uh, had to deal with. So Miami wasn't his favorite location in terms of productivity. Pittsburgh, of all places, was where he had his best season. And of course, we will give away some packs. In fact, let's give away some packs right now. Five packs, exclamation enter, exclamation ticket. Let's get this show a rolling. Now that we've got through the the muted and the non-camera and the silence. Let's uh, give away Ezra was the uh, Jeff Steele Flex was first in. Ezra was second in. And boy, if you missed yesterday's show, Ezra has a story to tell. Yes, Ezra absolutely went through the washing machine yesterday. Let me bring up a quick picture here because I did save a snapshot. Where is it here? I think it's right here. Yeah. Let me show you this. So the inaugural Laptop Hound, let me see if I can get the alliteration right. Laptop Hound Lower Level Leisure Lounge Daily Tournament started yesterday. And it was great to see a lot of you guys in there. I lost first round. But today I won first round, so we're 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 progressing. Uh, yesterday Ezra didn't quite get to finish his draft, and he finished with 18 players. He won what he won the first round with 18 players in Game Seven. Of all games, he won Game Seven in the tenth inning on a walk off. So he goes to round two, and it goes to he's down three to two. His team is the Starfleet Red Shirts. They're dying by the second. He's got no one left to play. Look at all the red in his lineup. And somehow he wins game six, two to one. I don't know how he did it. It's the Star Trek, I don't know, Star Trek luck. But the red shirts were not willing to die in game six. And he goes to game seven. A team full of dead, tired players. A team full of gym unknowns filling in as subs. And it's a 2-1 loss in Game 7 for Ezra. He almost pulled off that second round with 18 players who had nothing left in the tank. So, yeah, quite the feat. And we watched some of the highlights. It's on my last stream on the VOD. And players, he had one center fielder showing on the highlights. His pitcher wasn't even on the mound. The pitch just came with no one on the mound. It was a weird, weird glitch. When you watch Jim Unknown's play, they're not on the field. They can catch a ball, as some did. They can throw a ball, but they're not on the field in their little avatar. So, yeah, that was uh, quite the start to the Laptop Hound Lower Level Leisure Lounge. All bronze and iron players only. Speaking of tournaments. You know what? Let's let's do a bounty. Let's see how you guys you good you guys are on a Tuesday. The instructions are below. The deal or no deal Tuesday bounty is up. 
It is the Diamond to Perfect ID70, and it's the odds and evens. Odds or evens, actually both. All the batters you have to draft must have an even rating, 100, 90, 64, 42. All the pitchers you draft have to have an odd rating, 97, 43, you know, you catch the drift. So if you follow the rules of odds and evens, as pointed down below, and you beat me in the tournament, five packs your way. Better yet, if you win the tournament, you get the three in-game packs, plus I'll send you five more, or I'll send your name along, and they'll send you five more. So you potentially could win 13 packs in this tournament. You got to beat me, and then you got to run the table and win the tournament. Yeah, it's better than the three that you would normally get. So if you want to get involved, it's ID70. It's filling up quick, 11 out of 16 already. And we're going to do the quick draft. Then we'll have our break, and then we'll bring in our community guest. First time that he's been on the show. Okay. Let me take a look at the chat because who knows? Who knows? I might be, I might not be audible. Yes, declare that you're in so that I know that you have uh, been part of this experiment, part of this chat. Declare that you're in. Ban Ludwigs are in. Red shirts are in. I am in already. I believe I'm in. Yeah. ID 70, diamond to perfect. And yes, Ezra, we will allow you to draft more than 18 players, although you might want to consider that strategy. It worked well for you last time. Hitters are even, pitchers are odd. Just like your affiliates, some of them are even, and some, like myself, are odd. Yes. Okay, let's uh, go and do this draft. Pretty simple rules this time. All of you can, can follow those simple rules. Hitters, even, pitchers, odd. All right. Diamond to perfect. Uh, oh, this is the one with a lot of choices. So keep in mind that half of your rounds are perfect and half of them are diamond. So, yeah, you're going to get a lot of good players here. Washington Park is in. Good to see you. Lord Christic got Immortal Joe and Roy Campanella. Well, let's just give Lord Christic the win. Joe and Campy? Mind you, you get more than two perfect. So my first round is a kind of a dud. Could you have gotten a worse historical perfect round? I, I don't know. So we're going to take Ken Griffey Jr. And in honor of Cub fan Steve, we're going to take Billy Williams. Remember, you want to take most of your hitters. In fact, probably all your hitters. You got to take in those perfect rounds and then grab your pitchers in the diamond rounds. Any pitcher you take that's even does not qualify, so don't get sucked into taking a perfect pitcher. Uh, let's go with Oscar. Oscar and Griffey Jr. in the outfield. And we'll take, uh, let's honor um, Gorgo 2005 with De La Cruz. Campy and Brothers. That's another good combination there, Tess Luigi. All right, we're going to go uh, Pudge and Helton. I think that's a good combo. Although, although, let's go Clemente. Oh, let's go George Brett. Oh, yeah. So many good cards to pick. All right, can't take pictures. Can't take pictures. DeGrom, sorry. Ooh, this is a this is a nasty, nasty round here. Gonna have to go with Bancroft. And I guess blech. Yuck. Appling. Okay, can I have some diamonds, please? Let's go with Joe Morgan. 
And Ron, no, I got three third base, two third basemen. Don Mattingly. Manny, absolutely. Give me that perfect Manny and Hank Aaron. Oh, beat this outfield. Charleston, Aaron, Ramirez, and Griffey Jr. Okay, now we go on to the diamonds. Now I need some pitchers. Uh, plus, I can take a few hitters as well. But I need odd pitchers. Jason and Rodon. Next up. Hmm. Well, I can only take Moro for pitchers. So then I'm going to have to take my second catcher. No, let's take James Wood. Yeah. Come on, odd pitchers. Yeah, you're going to get some players you don't want to have to take here. Dave Smith and Jim. If you end up with a lot of relievers and no starters, well, that's just the luck of the luck of the cards. I can't take Roy Halliday. I can take Sam Lever and Meekin. No, I'm going to, yeah, well, let's go Meekin. This is a best of three, I believe. Ugh. Ryan Presley. And I don't think any other pitchers are eligible. No. So let's go with a second catcher, Mr. Howard. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. B.J. Ryan and Don Sutton. Now let's go Hernandez. Hernandez and Sutton. All right, I've got 10 pitchers. Probably need at least one more. Who can I take? Doug Drayback. And then we need a second baseman. If there is one. Second baseman. And then I got to double check my... Uh, you know what? I'm going to take two pitchers here, I think. Let's go Mr. LaRoche. All right, now I got to double check. Double check. Did I take any hitters that were even? Or odd, I mean. Do I have to bench any of my hitters here? Ah, James Wood. Oh, no, he works. He's even. Okay, so chat, this is how you do it. There we go. All my pitchers are odd. And all my hitters, except for Elston Howard, who I have to bench. So I'm lucky enough to get one, uh, one catcher. So bench him or put him on reserve. Send to reserve. Yes. That's okay. I can beat you guys anyway. 25 players. Ezra had 18. I can do this. We just need to sweep most of our rounds. All right. Let's take the bounty. Change a couple things around a bit. You guys can run a little bit, can't you? Let's hit and run a little bit. And pitching matchups a bit. All right, let's 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 go with that. Maybe I got lucky and uh, someone here can catch. Gabagoo yeah, Luigi, I want you first round now. I want you in the first round. Gabba, did you get a full roster? That is the question. I was doing so well until I forgot that my hitters had to be even in the diamond rounds. But I got Pudge. And I got Hank Aaron. 
and Oscar Charleston. This is this is a team that can sweep. In which case Pudge will get some rest. You only have 11 pitchers? All right. Let's see. Uh, I don't have very good pitchers. That is definitely a weakness. I did not get any odd, really good starters here. Sutton, Lever, Meekin, Hernandez. We're going to move up a little bit. And Dre Beck. Ryan Presley as a stopper is pretty good. Okay. Yeah, this is this is the best we're going to do. Let's see if that tournament is full. Uh it is. It is full. All right, we have a complete full tournament now. Let me take a quick peek here who is in this tournament before it fires off. We've got Ban Ludwig. We got the Bleacher Creatures. We've got the Candle Pin Bowlers. Escape from New York. The Belly Buttons. I haven't seen that before. The Fighting Belly Buttons. Well, that's that's pretty unique. We've got the Swamp Foxes. The Ghost Ships. The Heat. The Skunks. The Arrows. The Red Shirts. Rainiers. The Devils. And the Detroiters. I can take any of you guys except Ezra. I'm scared of Ezra after yesterday. He's just he just uncertain. Uncertainty with Ezra. All right, and we'll take a quick peek in at the uh current laptop hound daily lower level leisure lounge day two results. Here we are. I am down three games to one. But hey, I'm guaranteed at least two packs. So I got to win this one. Got to win this one. All bronze, all iron cards. So yeah, get involved in the dailies. Sign up for the one right now. It kicks off at about 11.30 a.m. Eastern is when these fire. And let's go take a look. If I recognize any of these names in round two. Charles, oh, Charles, what happened? Swept in round two, the baseball team. I was hoping to meet up with you in the, in the uh, quarterfinals. Uh, the dugout made it to round two. The boomsticks looking pretty good. The Cubs are in the same situation that I'm in, down 3-1. Team Oklahoma, Wildcat Bandit, up 3-1. EVC is hanging in there, 2-2. Two two. Uh, the Dodgers, 2-2. Two and two. So, yeah, definitely good to see some uh, familiar names in round two. The arrows are compliant. Good to see. I'm sure we'll find a few little glitches in terms of compliancy with that draft. So we'll check in on that a little bit later once it fires out, and uh, we'll see if the team that I'm up against, let's see if it's fired off yet. Nope. So we can't see the team rosters yet. All right, let me go back to the main screen. Welcome in, guys. I hope you enjoyed the Tuesday Treasure Trove and the cards that I believe are in packs now. I didn't see any confirmation, but I might have missed that preparing for the stream. So we've got lots to talk about today. And the first thing I want to do is bring in someone that is known to the community. This is someone that has spent a lot of time watching streams, spent a lot of time playing the game in various forms, whether it's the base game, online leagues, perfect team, and has come up with a way of rating his players that he has found successful. And uh, there are many modelers out there, and each modeler has their own formula, their own secret sauce of what they input into their spreadsheet. There is no one best one or one worst one. If it works, it works. And uh, I want to present you another alternative on how you can model your players to try to achieve the best that you can. Now, this could be for tournaments. It could be for league play. Uh, some modelers are strictly league. Some are tournaments. Some are both. But I think uh, you're going to find this a little bit enlightening. 
So without further ado, let me uh, bring up the right screen here. Uh, let's go with this one. There we go. Got to bring in a little bit of intro music for my guest here. You got me running, going out of my mind. All right, well, we, we got to stop it there because, you know, copyright. So we'll, we'll play our standard 10 seconds. E-L-O, yes, E-L-O, and... Uh, that's going to become a little bit prominent in just a little bit. Welcome to the stream. You've seen him in chat, Chess Safari. Chess, how you doing? Well, good morning, laptop. How are you? And oh, I'm good afternoon to my East Coast friends and good evening to those of you who are in Europe and elsewhere. It's nice to be on your show. Yeah, great to have you. And we've chatted uh, before a, a few days ago and kind of prepping for what you wanted to talk about today. And uh, Chess is uh, currently on the West Coast. Here's my great Google map that I like to use. So Chess, tell the community a little bit about, you know, where you reside now and, and how you're enjoying life. Well, we live in, uh, when I say we, I mean me and my beautiful wife, Natasha. Natasha and I live in a place called Charbonneau Village, which is in Wilsonville, Oregon. Uh, we've been here about four years after um, some visits elsewhere in the country. I'm born and brought up in New England, so I'm a lifelong Red Sox fan, a little bit out of place here. But uh, Charbonneau Village is a quasi-retirement community. It started as mostly people over 55. Over the years, though, uh, some younger people, some families have inherited the homes that their parents owned, and others have moved in because it's a nice spot, especially golfers. There's a nice 27-hole golf course on the property, and uh, it's often referred to as a cruise ship on land, although I think that's a bit of uh, marketing hype, but it's <laughs> a very nice place. There are walking trails and uh, lots of friendly dogs. Uh, I moved here during uh, COVID and been here ever since. And I spend most of my days, however, online playing OOTP baseball. Yes. Yeah, so and we talked about the cafe that you visit oh, yes. every once in a while with uh, the delicious. Oh, boy, <laughs> I'm getting hungry already. Yeah. But, uh, well, I've gained 14 pounds since I've lived here. And uh, a lot of it is due to Lux Sucra. And uh, yes. when anybody visits, um, that's the place we meet usually. It's a cafe. They have wonderful coffee. Not as good as Dunkin' Donuts coffee, but <laughs> good to drink nonetheless. And very uh, fattening but tasty foods. And one thing that you told me, kind of, you know, something that you want to do is very soon is just to do some traveling and you and your wife have, have have a big trip planned i believe for next summer maybe talk a little bit about what you're looking forward to with that trip well my wife uh, when my wife and i met in 2006 she was not a baseball fan but since that time we have seen games in seattle in oakland in kansas city in cincinnati in cleveland in boston and uh, World Series games at the home fields of the, I mean, not World Series, but spring training games at the home fields in Florida of the Phillies, the Orioles, the Mets, uh, the Red Sox. So Tosh has become, uh, I won't say addicted, but fond of baseball. And she has her favorite players as well. So one of the things we're talking about is maybe next summer or the summer after, going to Toronto to see the Red Sox play a three-game series. But I don't fly anymore because of health reasons, so it has to be a place I can get to by train. And uh, there is a train that leaves from Portland, goes through Seattle. You can get to Vancouver from there, and from Vancouver you can cross Canada 
to Toronto and beyond. So I think ideally, if we could save enough pennies, we would like to take a train from Oregon to Toronto next summer or the summer after, should I live long enough. So that's on our bucket list. Very cool. Yeah, Toronto, beautiful place. And uh, to see Shohei Otani as a Toronto Blue Jay, you know, that's going to be fantastic, watching him crush the Boston Red Sox. Yeah. Right, 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 Shohei, right, right, going to Toronto, right? (laughs) Why not experience Canada, right? Yeah, and uh, taking the train, I mean, the uh, traveling cross-country, I don't know if Tessawiji or Nershabenko or Cavacom, you know, the other Canadian streamers have done the train. Back in, in the day, it was the Via Rail, and, you know, especially on the western part of Canada, you, you go through the mountains and they tunneled through and you go through on the train. What a spectacular sight, taking a train trip across Canada. Yes, it takes longer. Uh, but it's just it's just such a fun, relaxing way to see Canada, except maybe Saskatchewan. <laughs> it's pretty flat. <laughs> and you can see right from Alberta to Manitoba, pretty much, if you've got good <laughs> eyes. Well, we want to stop at a couple of places along the way, maybe maybe meet some people uh, that we haven't met previously, but you know, also want to want to uh, see things like the Gordon Lightfoot Museum, which is north of Toronto on the train route, maybe stop a couple of other places along the way. Uh, You might find it interesting that actually Tosh and I met at the end of a train trip I took from Boston to Seattle. She was the one that had to meet me on the other end with uh, a friend's house keys so that I would have a place to stay once I arrived. That's how we met. Oh. Very cool story. All right. Well, I know that you, you, you know, like you, you told me you play hours and hours and hours of out of the park baseball. You've been playing this game now for a few years and playing it many different ways. One way that you've just recently got back into was online play with PBE Sim. You, you were part of PBE Sim in the past and you just recently created another player for that. So let's give a little love and a little shout out to PBE Sim. Tell us about a a couple of the players that you've created in the past. Okay. Well, for those who don't know, PBE stands for the Pro Baseball Experience Simulation, Simulated Baseball League and or Simulation Baseball League. And I joined that uh, during COVID. I was looking for something to do and I had played my own simulated baseball as a kid using a deck of cards and later dice and my baseball cards. And uh, so I searched online to see if there was something like that and found first found OOTPB and then immediately found out about pro, uh, PBE from uh, some, of the, some of the people in OOTPB. And I joined PBE and created a player in, in uh, 2020, and that player's name was Chess Sims, for obvious reason, as in Chess Sims. And um, that player was a catcher. Uh, he was on the Amarillo Armadillos championship team in 2023, which is a minor league squad. He got promoted to what was then known as the Kashima Foxes. And they went mm-hmm. through a name change of rebranding to the Maui Makos. But I only played for them for a short time. Uh, I left after some incidents happened in the league. They were, you know, minor. They're just politics. They were minor, but I, I took myself too seriously at the time and uh, left. But I was gone, gone only a few weeks and uh, came back and recreated a new player. And that new player was called Tedford Woofington. And Woofington played for quite a while. He was named after a uh, racing dog that I saw race at Canterbury Park in Minnesota when I was playing in a poker tournament. That's kind of a long story, so we won't do that here. But Tedford Woofington uh, was created uh, for what we call season S39. And he, he played uh, long enough to be one of only a handful of players ever hit 40 home runs in a season 
and also got 114 RBIs uh, in 108 games. So that's equivalent to 60 home runs and 171 RBIs in a major league season. So I was quite quite pleased with that. I mean, it was uh, no special uh, knowledge or expertise on my part. Um, it was, you know, the sim giveth and the sim taketh away. But PBE uses Art of the Park Developments as its engine to um, generate all of the games in league play. So the way it works is, a, is any anybody, anybody listening could go to the website for Pro Baseball Experience Simulation Baseball League, create a player, and then there are various activities that take 15 minutes, half hour, maybe an hour a week. And you use the points that you gather doing that to improve the attributes of your player. So basically think the back of the perfect team cards, you're as you go week to week, season to season, you're improving your player by adding points to those various attributes. And then uh, you get drafted by a team, first a minors team, and then a major league team. And you get put on the roster, put in games, and you can actually watch the games, a lot of them actually being streamed um, a couple of times, three times a week on PBE Sim. So that's where the PBE Sim comes in. That's a Twitch channel, and it's quite fun to watch your own player uh, up at bat or pitching on the mound and rounding the bases, and each team has a locker room and this a very uh, active uh, forum and Discord, so I met a lot of people in the past four years of doing this that, or three, year, three years on PBE, that I consider close friends at this point, and the main reason I went back was because I missed those people. I actually found myself missing those people, even though some of them are old enough to be my grandchildren or young enough to be my <laughs> grandchildren, I should say. It's a great community, very supportive. Being in a PBE locker room is being like in a uh, real life locker room. And yeah, as Punk is saying on the screen, today is opening day for the for the new season, season 44. Uh, and so, so to read that. To reboot your team, you uh, created a player in honor of your previous all-star player, Tedford Wolfington Jr., who will make his debut with Armadillo tonight in the season debut. Yeah, Tedford Wolfington Sr. was both a Silver Slugger Award winner twice. Uh, he went to the World Series but didn't, didn't did not win a championship, so hopefully Jr. will be able to win a championship with his major league team. But he was also a gold glove winner, which is one of the things that I'm proudest of with my player. A lot of people put their points into offensive categories, and then others will put them into speed or into defense. But it's hard to create a player that is outstanding both offensively and defensively. So for my for the previous player to win both Silver Slugger and um, – and Gold Glove was an accomplishment from, from my point of view, and I'm glad I had the opportunity to do that. Yeah, I have to, uh, I have to echo <laughs> that. I, I, I'm halfway there with my uh, rook, with my uh, minor league player, Hound Streamer, a Gold Glove winner, along with Jeff Steele Flex, a big part of our community, who is a Gold Glove winner last year too. So it is fun. It's like being part of a league, you know, in real life, you get to watch your player play, you get to shape him the way that you want that player to develop and then get drafted by a major league team and hopefully make their way to their roster. Like you said, 15 minutes to a half hour. It's kind of what I spend every weekend doing the different tasks. So I get points to upgrade my player. Doesn't require a huge commitment. And then they stream a few times a week on Twitch and you can watch them play. Well, Jess, main reason I brought you here is to talk a little bit about your way of modeling cards that you found successful. We're going to get into that, but we need to okay. take a, a quick break here first. Uh, last chance, guys, during the break, exclamation, enter, exclamation, ticket, get your name in. We will draw for five packs as soon as the break ends. Back in two minutes time.
All right, we're back. Did you guys recognize uh, Sean Paxlair's favorite players growing up on the screen there during the break? Let's see if uh, collectively the chat can come up with the names for these four players here. Big fan, a big, big fan, Sean Paxlair of these players. Anyone know who they are? Come on, all you pros out there, all you experts. Of course, big New York Met fan. So we've got some of the uh, New York Mets of the past. No? Don't recognize these? Well, some of them should be a little easy. Anyway, let's go and uh, do our first draw here. Seaver is one. Not Ray Knight, not Davey Johnson. No, Seaver is one for sure. Clendenin, don't think it's Clendenin. No, give you a few more seconds here. And I'll fill you in. I'll let you know who they are. Tom Seaver is the one that uh, fades in and out. In the bottom left-hand corner, we've got Cleon Cleon Jones from the Mets. We've got in the bottom right-hand corner, Bud Harrelson. And then the, uh, the bigger pitcher there, right in the center, is Mr. Jerry Kuzman. Yeah, Lord Christick. You got Jerry Kuzman. Not Bobby Valentin in disguise. No, no, it would not be that. No. Although, points for creativity there. All right, let me take that off the screen, and let's do our first draw here for five packs. All right. The winner of our first draw is... Mr. Ree, Mr. Ree, it is Mr. Ree. I know your username, so you do not need to whisper me. Congratulations. First winner of the day. So we're going to mark that one as complete. And right away, we're going to fire up the next one. So we'll leave this one running for a few minutes here. So, whoops, let's uh, go back here. And... Start a new one, exclamation, enter, exclamation, ticket. Jeff Steele Flex, where are you, buddy? You're usually first in here. Oh, we got uh, Pop Stongoria in first this, this time. All right. Okay, we'll leave that up and running. Let me uh, hit refresh on this. There we go. Names weren't coming in there, so let me just make sure it's working. Yeah, it's working. All right, back to... Our discussion with community member, longtime fan of OOTP, and this gentleman has has done it all in terms of gameplay. He's played OOTP. He's a poker player. He's a chess player. He's played backgammon. Any games I'm missing there that you were fairly competitive with their chess? A few, but I just want to say I didn't know you were going to do that to me. Rich oh. Grisham's 86 Mets broke my heart oh. <laughs> as a Red Sox fan. You did not tell me you were going to put Mets on the screen. Oh, sorry. I got nothing Look, against me. the people from New York, but it's bad memories, bad memories. I just yeah, thought I played, as a ball. Yeah, go ahead. No, I played uh, every kind of game you can imagine, I meant, I think, by at this point in my life. But I've been around a long time, so. It's easy to do. Yeah. So poker, yeah. We're, we've always been kind of teasing to try and get a poker tournament going with uh, OOTP players and affiliates and then have some fun because there's a few poker players, hold Texas Hold'em players in the crowd. And I did not know that about the Mets. I knew you were Red Sox fans. And so uh, I guess, yeah, it makes sense, you know, with the, the, the Mets and the situation with Boston. And But I was just thinking American League, National League, they didn't have a big rivalry, but of course, I forgot the the World Series that uh, they were in. But hey, you've won I'm the World Series. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I know, I know. All right. I'm Let's even wearing on. a Twins hat today, and uh, I'm not a Twins fan. I just wore this in honor of EVC. He always wears a hat, so this oh, was the yeah, closest yeah, yeah, yeah. one in my closet. 
Tell us the story of that twin's head, because I think it's a pretty cool story. Okay, so so one of the things that uh, I've done is seen a major league baseball game in every single city. My first one was Fenway Park in Boston in 1957. I went with my grandfather when I was a little kid. And the last one um, that completed my list was in Minneapolis in 2017. So I told myself that I would buy a baseball cap at the Twins Stadium um, to, just to celebrate. And when I got to the store, I hadn't bought a cap in a long time. And they had these replica hats that supposedly were the same brand the players wore. And I picked one up without even looking at the price and went to the counter. And um, they swiped my credit card through, and it was $36 plus tax. Apologize for my Boston accent. But 36 bucks. And I said to the clerk, all I bought was the hat. And he said, that's right, they're $36. So I never get a chance to wear this. Uh, I think I've only worn, worn it twice uh, outside the house. So I decided, well, since EVC is one of my favorite streamers, wears a cap, wears a hat uh, most of the time, and that's the thing with him. I, I would uh, wear, take the opportunity to wear this hat and get some, some of the $36 value out of it for today's stream. <laughs> Well, very, welcome to 2023 in inflation. <laughs> I wonder what they cost hat. now. That was 2017. Yeah. In Canada, and, it's 60, about 68 to 70 dollars for one of those hats in Canada uh, when they first come out. So it, I guess it I'm is not pretty buying pricey. any more hats. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, well, yeah. Cool story. So, yeah, get some use, get some use out of that $36 there. Okay. Let's talk modeling. Uh, first, before we get into the actual type of model and explain the the model that you use, just maybe a brief summary of of why you got into modeling. Like, what what inspired you to start to model OOTP? Yeah, well, I go I go back to the early early days. I say OOTPB twenty and twenty one, twenty one in particular when uh, your kidneys and DRC nomads and. Uh, Few, a few of the others, Angered Unicorn, were using spreadsheets to do modeling. And uh, I learned from uh, DRC Nomads how to download the files into a spreadsheet, convert it to a pivot table, and have the data, data at your disposal. Um, and uh, I, I paid very close attention. But for me, it was problematic. It w wasn't very useful, not because of the nature of the spreadsheets themselves I have great respect for what kidneys and DRC did in particular, but I don't play tournaments. I'm, I'm really not a tournament player. Once in a while, I'll get in one um, just for the fun, but I don't build my game in game economy by winning packs from playing tournaments. That's just not the way I do it. I, I have another whole system for how I upgrade my players, but I always wanted to use the models for league play. And the, the problem with tournaments for me was that the tournaments, tournament data gets stale really quickly because new cards come into the meta and uh, the old data doesn't, doesn't make much sense anymore. And if you take all the old data out as you're adding in new data, which is something I tried for a while, then you don't have a big enough sample size on a lot of players. And, and you do need to have, uh, I think Kidneys used to say 40,000 to 50,000 uh, batters faced if you're a pitcher or plate appearances uh, if you're a batter. And I apologize, Kidneys, if I misquote you or if you feel differently, differently these days, but you need to have a critical mass of uh, plate appearances to have the sample size big big enough to be reliable. It also has to be random. And if uh, it's re really hard to make the tournaments that you play in random, uh, or at least meet the definition of random. So the, the tournament data sets were not really helpful for me in league play. 
also, you know, the the environments change over time. You've talked about that a lot on your on your stream, and so has Charles Warbot and is Adolfo and others. Um, so I, I wanted to find a different way of evaluating league play, but also benefiting <laughs> from the data that the game gives you, because that data is very, very valuable. And uh, being a chess player for a long time, I'm familiar, as many of your viewers might be, with what's called the ELO rating system, where you know the basic theory is if you have a closed group of players and you compare them with respect to how they do versus one another, it doesn't matter if there are new players coming in and going out all of the time or if some of the data is inherently old. Um, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the ELO rating system was um, created by Dr. Ar Arpad ELO, who was a physics professor at, uh, I think, the University of Wisconsin, and also a very strong chess player. And he created this system in the 60s. It was adopted by the United States Chess Federation in the late 60s by the world governing body of chess in, the, in 1970, and has since been adopted by the Professional Backgam Gammon Association, by uh, Scrabble tournaments, by uh, I, I went into a, uh, a bar one time where they have a, had a dart board and uh, you could sign up for a, a sanctioned dart league and they were using an ELO rating system. They use it for billiards in Great Britain. Uh, I'm told they use it for snooker. So there are all kinds of closed games that have adopted the ELO rating system um, to evaluate players. So I decided, well, or I thought in theory that maybe the ELO rating system, which is quite complicated, but the theory of the ELO rating system could be adopted to out of the park baseball, uh, specifically perfect team. Now, when you're in perfect team, you only have access to the stats for the league you play in, or if you team up with some other players, you can maybe pool those stats. Uh, there, there, for a time, people were downloading stats from their leagues and their tournaments onto uh, Discord, but that's a lot of work. So what I decided to do is have uh, multiple teams on my license. I started with three. Now I have two licenses, so I have six. And then each of them, each week, have those teams randomly assigned uh, to a league. And then I don't have much money. I'm on a budget. So I wanted to focus on the leagues that I could play in, which would be mostly gold, but also occasionally diamond. And uh, after a bad week, I might get relegated to silver. But my focus was players that played well in silver, gold, and diamond. And my data set is from league play in silver, gold, and diamond. So I don't have any of the statistics in my database related to perfect league. Now, you might say, well, what good is that? You don't have all the best players. Well, I have the best players when they used in the lower leagues and how they perform in those lower leagues relative to the other players in the leagues. And I started doing that two years ago. Last year, I got some input uh, by watching uh, Kidney Stream and a few of the others. And I started tinkering and uh, trying to evaluate why my lists were different than other lists. And uh, I came upon a, a logarithm that works for me. And since I started doing that, um, my teams, all six of them, and three of them are free to play. Uh, the other three, you know, I, I have a, a very small budget that my wife allows me to put in each month, spread across the three teams. Uh, less than 100 bucks a month usually, plus I'm in PT plus. And now I have one team in diamond, two teams in gold, and three teams, in, and the three free to play teams are in silver. So I'm happy with that. Um, I enjoy doing that. I played with the theme team crew for a while. And I, I love the people in that. And of course I enjoy EBC and NYC too a lot, but um, 
it worked at cross purposes with what I was trying to do because in TTC, you sign up for leagues with your friends and you get in with the same people every week, including your other teams if they're at the same level. So for me, I, it was no longer ran, a random pool and no longer, in my mind, statistically valid to use for um, setting my team. So I set my team every Sunday night in all six leagues based on the ratings, which are ELO ratings on a scale of 20, with 2,200 being average. I set my teams every week that way. So my team that's running in Diamond League right now, the 12, the 13 best pitchers and the 13 best pitchers are the based on ELO ratings are on that team. And right the last time I checked before your your before uh, Paul Spora started his stream was uh, three games above 500 in Diamond League. So I'm happy with that. I think for me, it works. I'm not saying that it's a perfect system. I'm not suggesting that anybody else adopt my system, but it works for me. And for those who might be curious about looking at it um, and examining why, um, you know, you can do that. I'll, I'll, I'll work with you to do that. And uh, the other thing I'd say is you'll find that the ratings for these players using the ELO system differs from what's uh, in many ways some significant in what's considered the meta for tournaments for those same players. And uh, it's interesting to me to try to examine the reasons why uh, there are many, uh, some of which I think I understand and some of which remain a mystery to me, but my data works for league play at the silver, gold, and diamond level. Mm -hmm. And uh, within PBE, we have 75, I think, uh, players at last count who also play OOTPB Perfect Team. And we have a Discord there, and I've helped other players in PBE improve their rosters in OOTPB Perfect Team. And uh, the feedback I've received from them has been extremely positive. Um, everyone who's said something to me has said I've helped improve their team without them having to put any more money in or buy any expensive cards. And uh, perhaps the ones I didn't help have just been silent. But it's, it's, been, it's been fun. It's been a, another aspect of the game for me that's made it enjoyable and also allowed for interaction with other players. All right. Well, we're, we're going to show a little bit of this off. And uh, Chess is, is is willing to, like I said, after the stream, if you want to get in contact with them and ask them about specific players, maybe we'll we'll get some questions a little bit later about specific players and where it fits on his scale. But Chess, if you want to share your uh, share your screen and show off some of the categories and you know the basic nuts and bolts of how it works, and then once you kind of do a basic overview, I gave Chess my players in my gold league, the Rocky Mountain Gladiators players on the team. And I've got a couple of screenshots there, or he can show them on his screen. And we'll see where those players fit on this ELO screen. So back over to you, Chess. Tell us a little bit about just kind of the, the, the workings of how this rating system functions. Okay, so so the scale, once again, is is on an average of 2,200. Uh, I've got players that go down to a thousand rating. Uh, well, I don't want to give anybody motion sickness, so I'll, I'll try not to scroll too much through. Um, but the average player is 2,200. But for me, in order to play on my diamond team, they have to be rated above 2,350, and preferably they're rated above 2,400. Uh, the the really top player players that play in perfect league uh, they're uh, they're in the high 2500s or maybe over 2600 so just looking at it from a sniff test test point of view here's some some pictures right here you will see that the ratings actually mirror what uh, most of the smart people say are the best players 
Uh, they may be ranked slightly differently, but you know, 25 points difference on an ELO scale is not very much. They're, they're essentially the same strength. But in order to demonstrate how this works, um, and I'll give an overview and then maybe answer some questions later. I'll start with Clayton Kershaw. The ones that are listed with a, a lap in the flag field, the top 12 uh, pitchers on this screen, this is uh, pitchers uh, through Sunday. Um, I'll start with Kershaw to explain how this works. So I've collected data for all 36 seasons since the beginning for all of my teams, nobody else's, that I think is randomly generated and has sufficient, uh, for most players, sufficient sample size to be uh, relevant. And remember, they're not absolute ratings. They're relative ratings to each other player. So for example, Kershaw being 2580, that's, that's how he stands relative to a player that many people are familiar with, let's say Joanne Santana, whose rating is 2330. So Kershaw is rated 250 points higher than Santana. So he's quite a bit better. Um, somebody else like Randy Myers, who's rated 2101, is quite a, uh, Santana is quite a bit better than him. So it's a relative scale. It's not an absolute scale. And because so I'm just using interject, that, yeah, Sorry to ahead. interject, Jess, but in terms of the ELO ratings and someone uh, that you mentioned like Clayton Kershaw, you know, when we look at a score of 2580 and we look at the ELO ratings, for chess or for backgammon or whichever other game, he is would be at that grandmaster level, right. correct? 2,500 is the threshold in FIDE, the international governing body for chess, for what a grandmaster is. Uh, 2,400 so then, is considered a senior master. Um, so you're saying to play in diamond, you, the player should be at least a, what, a master in to, to be playable has to be at least 2350, in my opinion, okay. in league. To to okay. have a uh, better than average team, a team that might make the playoffs, your players should be over 2400. Um, that's that's my opinion, what, what I've seen from experience. So I did make the Diamond League. I made it to all the way to the Diamond League uh, World Series one season. And in that season... Um, I think all but one of my players were over 2,400 with with the cards that were in the game at that time. Uh, it was before the Immortals. Um, those same players are now rated quite a bit lower than that because the ELO system takes into consideration how the card pool changes over time um, because every new download rates every player in relation to every other player and incorporates every other player's accumulated ratings in its calculation. It gets it gets pretty complicated unless you're a, a stat head, but I, I do try to stay true to that system. So let's look at the specifics on Kershaw. I think that might be helpful. So he's rated 2580. That's a result of an algorithm, but there's raw data that I draw to get that. So let's look at that raw data. Here's Kershaw. Kershaw has live cards that through the season have been 78, 89, 90, 91, 92, 100. You can see those on the screen? Yep. Is that clear? And then his 100 card that just came out, there's only one of them. Um, I have 18,911 batters faced. And then there's some other data that I collect. This is a pivot table that has the summary data that, and just just to say what these are, um, this 493 is number of earned runs, 4.3 is the total war, and then this next number is um, a calculation of ERA, which got around another problem with those old spreadsheets that we used to do for tournaments. And that old problem was that if you download pitchers, you've got, th you know, the pit innings pitcher in thirds of an inning. So you might have somebody that had a season where they had 160.2 innings 
but 0.2 is actually 0.67. And I was meticulous about converting all those decimals. And some of the really good spreadsheet people wrote uh, macros that converted those. But I decided to get around it another way. What I did is I used batters faced. And then I looked at throughout history of Major League Baseball, how many average batters face there are per inning, which is roughly is somewhere between 4.2 and 4.25. So yesterday when you were showing a couple of players side by side, uh, I looked at the batters faced and it was 38.09 for a nine inning game for one and 38. 20, I think, for the other, somewhere around there. So that was absolutely consistent with my 4.2 to 4.25 batter's face. So what I do is I collect the batter's face, and then I divide that by 4.25 per inning to get the number of innings pitched to calculate what I refer to as a modified ERA. So I use WAR, my calculation of modified ERA, and um, – um, an algorithm that also includes a little, a little hit for um, stamina that um, you know I've, I've developed through my testing over the years. I do a lot of testing on the OOTPB engine. But anyway, this pivot table is where the data for Kershaw comes. So this, this 538 here and the 18,000 batters faced, if you go to the, my main sheet top line, the KBF is thousands of batters faced is 18. And then the 538 is the number that you saw in that pivot table. This 487 is my, my uh, ratio, call it that, adjusted for stamina. And what I do is I um, subtract out 50% of the difference between that stamina and every other pitcher's stamina in decimals. So again, I don't want to get too much into the weeds, but just so you can follow what's on the sheet, this 1.02 is Kershaw's stamina on that card. So in relation, let's say to Baumgartner, there's a 50% of that difference of 0.09 built into this RAFS, which is then used to calculate the rating. So going back to Kershaw again, the pivot table shows all these plate appearances. Well, I can also go back and look at every single line that I've down downloaded for Kershaw since the very beginning of the game. So I have the original data. I have the pivot table. And then I have, uh, and I'm not a math teacher, so <laughs> um, apologies if I'm really boring you, but this is what I use. This is what I use to um, to set my team. Uh, I do it every week, and um, it works for me. Now, I took the liberty to put your team, uh, LAP, the, the one team you sent me, I think it's the Gladiators, um, yep. on, on the system so we could look at how these players um, rank in relation to one another. And then if you want to, we can look at specific other players that maybe you have on your reserve roster or uh, at, you know, ranked at the top, even the expensive cards, and see how they compare ratings-wise. Um, All right. But the higher yeah, no, the overall rating, the better your team's going to be. Let's ab absolutely do that. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna draw for our next winner of five packs here in just a couple minutes. Uh, great time for a, a break here. Before we uh, go to the break, uh, what I want to do is. Uh, ask you guys if you have any specific players you want Chestafari to kind of show you where they rank on his table just post it in the chat and we'll get to that a little bit later and in terms of tournaments we have awarded the bounty already I lost game number three to Tacoma 11 to 7 so congratulations to the Tacoma Rainiers advancing and knocking me out of the tournament so I will use Lord Christic there you are again, Lord. You've had my number this week. Uh, you've done well. Lord Chris 33 congratulations on taking the bounty. Still five packs plus the in-game packs on the line between New York, Houston, the Belly Buttons, the Devils, the Bowlers, the Bowships, Rainiers, 
and the arrow. So I didn't get a chance to face Tessuigi this time, but uh, that's the way that's the way the random generation goes. So guys, we'll be back in two minutes to continue the conversation and to give away a few more packs. Exclamation enter, exclamation ticket. See you in two minutes time. I'm back here with Chess Safari and Chess Safari joining me from the state of Oregon uh, today. And we are talking about uh, the ELO system of modeling cards that works for him. And again, many modelers out there. And if you find a, a way to model cards that works for you, excellent. This is just another alternative using that ELO system. And I think what we'll do, Chess Safari, to kind of you know, make this a little bit more uh, community involvement and interaction here. I'll bring up again uh, the my team and where they fit on the rating. Have your spreadsheet ready as well. And we can kind of okay. go back and forth between, you know, comments in the chat and uh, the team I currently have on the Gladiators. All right. So I'll wait for you. Okay. So you got yours up. We'll kind of go back. Okay, and forth. so just just quick, since the last screen you saw, I resorted it from my own team just to show how easy it is to do that. Uh, I'll switch back to your team again, but you see these green links where it says links and they're in green. Those are the yeah. team. Those are the players that are on my diamond team right now. The pitchers. I also have the same thing for hitters, but um, these are the pitchers. So I actually use this list, and as you can see, I don't have you know, the really top players on my team that are used in uh, perfectly. I have some good players, Gagne, Koufax, Neuhauser, Carlton, um, but, you know, I, I use them based on, on what I have been able to win by um, completing missions over time. I don't go out to the card shop and spend hundreds of thousands of points on any one card. I've never done that, and I still don't do that. Um, okay. So anyway, all right. And then just to show you how quickly I can go back to what I had, I just click on this column to get all the ratings in order, and then I 
flag your team and there's your team again at the top. So it's very easy nice. to navigate through this, even though there are over a thousand pitchers and a thousand hitters uh, in the in the spreadsheet. It's very easy to navigate. Okay. So let's do this. Uh, this is this is my pitching staff, and then we'll take a look at hitters. There's a few names people mentioned in chat, which I'll, I'll let you know. But right now, if I want to be competitive, and you said you know to reach the playoffs, you kind of want a ELO rating of about 2,400. So right now, uh, in terms of pitchers that I should keep and and push me towards diamond playoffs, Dave Steeb, Hilton Smith, Noodles Hahn, Baumgartner, and Kershaw should be good enough to get me to diamond playoffs. I, th I think so. And if you, mm -hmm. uh, if you add uh, an array of other players with similar ratings, you can do that too. Um, okay. Ryan and Hershiser are both, mm -hmm. and Hoffman as well, are both still playable in diamond. Um, you're going to have a better than average team um, if you keep those. And even okay, how about Santana has kept his value throughout the season, but I definitely wouldn't keep playing Ward, Candelaria, and Myers. Ward is actually a better player as a hitter. Uh, he's a two-way yes. player. You have him in the bullpen as well as on your offense. I wouldn't. I wouldn't let him pitch. Mm -hmm. But that's my opinion. Yeah, I, I, uh, I made a change this morning with Monty Ward. He is no longer uh, a pitcher for me. So okay. I'm looking at your your sampling size. And of course, Johan Satan has been in the game pretty much forever. Two million yeah. plus uh, yep. pieces of information that you've had from him. So you got, you've got a lot of details. So let's go through some of the names mentioned in chat. Um, you mentioned Newhauser. So can you bring up Newhauser and where he would fit if he would be one of the guys that I might be able to get? Oh, definitely. Hal Newhauser is 2518 rating. So if you picked him up, he'd be your third best pitcher behind uh, Kershaw and Baumgartner. See him hey, right here? And how about Dwight Gooden? Ah, Gooden. All right, let me just sort by uh, by name so, it, so that I don't waste anybody's time. You can sort this spreadsheet in all different ways, as you can see. So Gooden. Uh, Dwight Gooden is 24-27, so he's also playable. Okay. If you can afford him, no. or if you have him on your reserve roster already, or if you have a mission that's reasonable to achieve that will result in your getting Gooden, then uh, definitely go after him. He'll improve your team. All right. Now, here's a no-brainer for you. I know the answer to this, but I, I won a choice pack, a, a perfect choice pack last week, and one of my choices was Jake Arrieta, who I – Pick who I took, who I picked. Where does he rank on your scale? I know you. Okay, might so Ariad is so new that yeah. the sample size for him is small. You see, 0.4. He's only had 400. I think he came out Thursday, right? So he's only uh, had 400 or yeah. so uh, batters faced. But he's 23.53 based on those. I have a, I have a sense that he will go up. Now he may be being played in perfect league, but in my my leagues, di diamond, gold, and silver, he's only faced four hundred batters through Sunday. So next okay. week, I'll, I'll maybe have four or five thousand um, batters faced for him, and it'll be more reliable. I would play him. I th I think he's going to be in the twenty four hundreds when when there's enough sample size. Right. And uh, Cavacom's asking, is that 2 billion batters faced or 2 million? That was 2 million, right? For 2 million. Ones. So if you look at my overall database um, and the batters and pitchers are essentially the same, I have 42 million, uh, 666,789 batters faced. So there's 42 million um, plate appearances in, in my database. So that's right. a lot. Any other pitchers uh, chat that you want us to kind of look at their ELO rating and and whether they'd fit? Again, we're looking for you know to be competitive in diamond according to Chess Safari's modeling. Uh, you want an ELO rating of like twenty four hundred. Again, sample size is low on a lot of these, so take that with a grain of salt. Um, <clears throat> oh, Kev is asking. Well, he asked because 
what did you say? Because the column was per thousand. So I, I, yeah. I, I thousand batters that. faced. So, oh, I see. Okay. Well, well, the ones that have more than a million, I just stopped transcribing the actual number each week to save myself some time. So in okay. that box, I put in the code 1 million plus or 2 million plus or whatever. So I, I don't auto here? look up these things. I, I started trying to auto look up uh, the, the, uh, the ones on my team when there were only a few hundred. But now that there are several thousand cards, many of which I don't have or don't use, um, to go through the process of doing an auto lookup in each cell was just not worth the effort. So now I looked them up manually, the ones that I might use. And um, I find that helpful because it makes me think about that particular player for a few seconds, focus on them. And then also, you know, I have an impression in my mind whether or not the sample size is, is good or not. But yeah, that's a good point that the yeah. 1 million plus makes it sound like a billion. He must be a math person. It's a, <laughs> for for those of you that watch the Franchise Hockey Manager stream, Boiled Egg, if you're still here, when, when I take our faces off the screen and I just listen to Chess, doesn't he sound like the guy that broadcasts the Franchise Hockey Manager stream? <laughs> you got an identical voice to the guy oh, that does that. Really? Voice. Boston <laughs> accent and all? You should hear me when I've had a couple of glasses of wine. The Boston comes through loud and clear. <laughs> All right. Uh, a couple comments about Jake Arrieta. Um, Grish says he, he seems relatively average. Uh, Gypsy son, son has said Arietta has been fantastic for him, led him to a gold championship. So, again, it, he's a relatively new card. It's going to take some time. We do have a couple more uh, people asking about players. How about the... Jose Fernandez. Again, it's a relatively new card. You might not have a lot of information, but what can you pull up for him? Okay, I'll pull him up in a second, but I, I did want to point out a couple of quick things, very quick. Um, number one, if you look top to bottom on my list, they're all hundreds, interesting, uh, at the top until you get to 97 Jack Wheeler. He's the first outlier. He has 22,000, Zach Wheeler, he has 22,000 plate appearances or bat is faced and he's up there with the hundreds. So if, if you got that card, he's a, he may be a sleeper. Same with Andy Pettit. Most people know about Pettit. He's underrated in my opinion. But then the ones that are interesting to me is there's the PTCS Frank Killen who does really, really well in tournaments. He also does really, really well in the leagues is an expensive card, but if you have that, he's up there. And then uh, this one, there's some controversy. I know that EVC, who I respect a lot, is a naysayer on Cliff Lee. But in my experience with about 9,000 uh, batters face, Cliff Lee has actually done quite well in silver, gold, and diamond leagues. Now, I point that out because if down the road uh, some of your other regular guests, like Isadolfo or, or Charles, want to look at this and maybe assess the players who are different in their performance in league play versus their performance in tournaments, mm -hmm. want to take a look at it and try to dig more deeply into the reasons why I, I would find that interesting. I don't know enough about the different tournament formats. It's like I said, I'm not really a tournament player to be able to make that analysis myself. Um, but there, there are some players, you know, take a Johnny Antonelli. I can name a lot of others who are, uh, significantly different in their performance in tournaments and their performance in the top tier leagues other than perfect league. Okay. Having said that, you okay. said Jose, who Jose. Actually, just wait a second. I think let's just leave it on this screen because you've got them all ranked in, in order of rating. So, you know, we're looking at the, Is this everybody, uh, Hold on yeah. a second. Let Looking me, at let me the yellow, make... so Gagne, okay. Randy Johnson, you have, again, very limited sample size, only 5,000. But Yeah, those are new cards, like and they're not not yeah. too many people at our level have that, have those. Okay. 
Now, your Sandy Koufax, you've got the two. Is that a combination of both Koufax cards? Yeah. So so next year, I'll, co I'll correct this. But one of the things I did at the beginning of the year is when I started down, when I did the data set uh, definition for the downloads of the uh, sortable stats, I did not include card ID. I didn't anticipate that I would ever need that. I felt it was sufficient to have the overall rating and then the name and uh, the rest of the data, and that would be enough. But then that Sandy Kofex limited edition came out, and not many people had it, but it was really, really good. <laughs> and now the new Sandy Kofax Immortal has come out. So there are two 100 Sandy Kofaxes. And the only thing that's different about them, um, you know, besides, you know, the performance isn't identical, but the, the, the difference in the data that I collect is that the stamina is different. So in this model, I've adopted the higher one, which is the Immortal, has a 1.05 stamina, but I still use the collective data. And, you know, whichever one I use is going to be about the same. Same with... Um, um, who do I want to say? Um, same with Satchel Page, for example. His Negro League card is very good, but his Immortal is even better. And at this point, <laughs> he's over 2,400 both ways, so it really doesn't matter. I just use the better one, and I'm, I leave it at that. But it's a, it's a, it's one of the um, shortcomings in my model is for players that have two cards at the same overall rating. Um, the data is merged and, uh, I haven't seen, well, yeah, mm. there are a couple. So, um, an Aaron judge who, well, I guess he's not the example trout who might have a hundred live card and a hundred immortal card, uh, that plays significantly different. Their results are significantly different. Merging that data is problematic. But, you know, there are few enough of those that I can micromanage those cards. I don't use yeah. Trout either way, so I guess it doesn't really matter for me. But, uh, yeah, you point out a, a flaw, and I just signal that by having the number two next to the name. All right. So uh, now on the very left-hand side where it says a rating with 100, you can filter that, like, very easily just to show gold cards and below rather than having to, you know, scroll through everything. I can. There are two two quick ways to do it. The fastest is just to sort by rating and then go down to where the eighty nines start. Okay. Uh, which is which is here. The other way to do it though is to put a flag in. Let's say put a I'll put a G in for gold. And then I'll put it in all of them. Um in reality, what I do is I do it for the ones on my team. Okay. Now I can sort on that column. So I'm starting with the rating highest to lowest. I sort on that column, and there are all the Gs. So now there are all the gold pitchers ranked. Ah, okay. So Isn't killing cool? price. <laughs> yeah. So if you're playing gold, I mean, and, and again, you say this is this translates best to league play, or does yeah, this... it's league play. So there's okay. there's an example the new uh, the new meta card that everybody's using the PTMS card. I forget who that is, but his rating is really low in league play. Um, I don't even remember who that is. Uh, somebody help me with that one, but. Anyway, Killen does well in league play as well as in tournaments, but uh, this is this is how this is how they do. So the yellow, the orange links that I have over here in this column, see where my cursor is? Those are the ones that um, that if if I'm if I want to play in a gold tournament, which again I rarely do, but if I wanted to, that those are the players that I own and the ones that I that I would probably put on my roster. Okay. Um, Maybe let's do a couple more specific ones because we didn't come across them. So let's go back to Jose Fernandez and uh, take a look at 
what his uh, ELO is, and then we'll do one or two more pitchers, and then we'll take a break and go over to the batters, and we'll finish off looking at some batters. So Okay, so you said Jose Fernandez. Um, yeah. So the Jose Fernandez that I have in this database is – He's, he must be brand new because I don't have anything. Did he just come okay. out Thursday? Yeah, he's a tournament card. Yeah, he's a tournament card, so there might not be a lot of. Uh, oh yeah, he's in the new updated the tournament. Room. So yeah, I'm okay. not going to have him yet. I you know I can look and see if he's in the database. I can do that quickly uh, and tell you how many. Uh, whoops, sorry. Yeah, I have four thousand. Well, I do have four thousand. Um, Plate appearances for him. He has an 8.14 raw score, which would uh, translate roughly. Let me find somebody else who has an 8.14 raw score. I, I would say it would translate roughly to tw uh, 20, 2175. So he's not that good. Or if it's the okay. same guy, 99 Fernandez, is that, is that what he is? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's the tournament one. That might be, I don't know. Uh, we'll skip yeah, Jose. Might be no I'm not, I don't know. If I, I never used that yeah. card. And again, it's a relatively new card. What about right. this question here? So here's someone saying, I'm considering a roster move, Josh Donaldson to Rube Foster. As, oh, uh, is it Josh Donaldson? John Donaldson. Donaldson. John Donaldson. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> You're just testing me to make sure I'm listening, just right? Testing you, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, that's that's easy to find. So I, I put them in alphabetical order now to make it quick. Uh, by the way, I haven't tried to use this for uh, doing per, doing the um, perfect drafts yet because 20 minutes doesn't seem like enough time. But the couple of times I tried to do it just for the top cards, I've really uh, I've done better. I've I've won won some choice packs doing that. So John Donaldson is rated twenty two seventy six, and who's he thinking of uh, substituting for him? Rube Foster. Rube Foster is that a new one again, or is that the old one? Uh no, that's been out for a while. Okay, there's a new Foster, so obviously I don't have um, many for him, but it only takes a week or two before I get enough. So Rube Foster is twenty two forty, so they're about the same. 2240 okay. versus what did I say? Uh, versus 2276. Donaldson's still slightly better, but not by much. 36 uh, ELO rating points is not very much. Yeah, I guess it kind of that's when you would bring in to uh, bear the park factors. I, I should talk about that. I don't, I don't ignore park factors. Um, what the modelers like Warbot seem to do. Uh, based on my observing what they've said, is that they will determine what in what run environment they're in, park factors and um, era and things like that, and they will build their team to suit that. I take the opposite approach. I pick my team based on the highest ratings, and then... I adopt the ballpark for that season that best fits that team. So I do change ballparks every season for every team um, so that if I want uh, to strongly favor the pitchers or I want to favor left-handed hitters or right-handed hitters, I can do that. So I say all of that to indicate that when the ratings are this close between Donaldson and Foster, you might want to consider what ballpark you're in. And Donaldson's left-handed. Yeah. Uh, Foster is right-handed. So if you're playing in a, a home park that favors right-handed pitchers or left-handed batters, then you want, you know, you you uh, may want Foster. If you're playing in a park that favors left-handed pitchers, you may want Donaldson because otherwise there's not much between them. Is that helpful? All right. We have to take a quick break here at Chess Safari. But when we come back, we'll take a look at the batters and uh, what your modeling says about some of these batters we always hear about. So back in two minutes time.
Let's do a quick draw here for our next five packs. Those of you that have entered a while back, it's time to close this one off and uh, award our second winner. First one was Mr. Ree. And uh, closing off right now, 40 entries on this one. Our second winner is CM Bandit. CM Bandit 525. Pretty sure I know who that is in the username, but just so I have it on file here, can you whisper me? CM Bandit. And at 525, and uh, we'll get uh, those names sent off after the show today. All right, two winners down. Let's uh, get one more going here. Let's start this one up. And uh, feel free to enter again, exclamation, enter, exclamation, ticket. And again, nice to have the community here expressing their kind of interest in the game and some of the things they feel might help other users of the game we looked at uh, a lot of the pictures and yeah warbot we did have two questions we had one about Foster rube foster versus uh, donaldson and then we had another one later asking about bill foster which is a relatively new card and probably just doesn't have a lot of information because he just came out last week so we won't look at the uh, at the bill foster right now let's take yeah, a look I... though at at the batters. So here are my Rocky Mountain Gladiator batters. And uh, again, here are the uh, scores. I'm assuming the, the 2,400 is equal to batters and pitchers. Yeah, it's still on a, on ELO rating um, grid. And it's still every player relative to every other player. And it's still an average of 2,200. So if you got any player below 2,200, okay. they're, they're actually below average in the whole database of all the players uh, from those leagues. So in a nutshell, Carlos Gomez all the way to Reggie Jackson need to go if I want to be more successful in Diamond. That's what you're telling me, right? That's what I'm That's what I'm telling you. And I would even, if I could upgrade from Loft, Lofton and Ward, I would do that as well. From uh, okay, so Walker Cooper and above, I'd be okay with that. Um, but really, the only three that'll – that'll work for you if your goal is to get to diamond playoffs and make, you know, and succeed in that. The only three are the ones you have at the top. Um, well, plus Aparicio. I'm partial to Aparicio, as you know. But but you know what? I'll the, the, give the, you the, kudos for this, that um, Yasmani Grandal was really a surprise for me when I looked him up. He was not on my radar. I don't I don't have that player. So I don't know where you found them, whether he was part of your goal tournament meta and you decided to put him in league. But 12,000 plate appearances, you know, which is not a lot, but it's enough to give you a clue. He, he's really very competitive uh, at at gold and diamond and silver. Yeah, well, there there are a few other people that... Uh, I bought him last night, so he... <laughs> well, that's... Good. I can yeah. thank Warbot. So there's a link next to him because I bought him last night. <laughs> ah, okay. All right. Uh, well, the one once that you showed him to me, I, me, you know, I bought him. <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm still shocked, and I know not uh, other modelers probably don't have him in the same place. But the Eddie Matthews was an LE card out of 25 from a long time ago, early in the game. But according to your ELO ratings, he still, in league at least, plays fairly well. Well, he does. But if you look at everybody, let me just do that quickly. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, I'm trying to click on your screen. I'm sorry. I'm getting tired, I think. Uh, <laughs> let me go to my screen. Um, at least for Diamond League, not for Perfect League. I'm not talking for we're talking diamond gold silver leagues we're ignoring perfect league these right. are kind of suggestions for what you can use to be more successful up to diamond so so these are all of the players and your players uh matthews banks you know cash down there com compared to what's available there are a lot of better player better batters 
out there. But, you know, a lot of, many of them are not affordable to a budget player like us. So if you can't, if right. those aren't accessible to you, if, if the Brett and the K-Line and the Joe Morgan and Frank Thomas are not available, then uh, you got to work with the others. And um, Matthews is still good in that regard. In fact, he's not that far so behind how the Aaron has done in uh, in early. And Aaron, early to be fair, very limited sample size like i yeah, think he'll work 6, his way up there probably yeah, yeah. once i get some more so your, first diamond, your first diamond card was was that norm cash that i saw the 97 yeah, norm cash, yeah he's, 99 norm cash yeah so those you can see there. your first gold that shows uh grandal wasn't until i put you put him on my radar before then it was phil garn no he only has a thousand so of the ones that have a lot, uh, Barry Larkin is pretty good, 2243. But, you know, they're not, these goals are not playable if you want to uh, do better than average in Diamond or even win a gold World Series. Uh, or, and how about silver and bronze? Like what were your highest one Barry Larkin. on the yellow? I'm sorry. Silver, how about your top silver and your top bronze? All right, let me put them list. in rating order. That will be easier. So uh, top silver is Michael Lowell, Pedro Guerrero. This is in league play. It's Scott Rowland. Yeah. And Corey Seager is 23-28. I don't think there are any 2400s. Josh Hamilton is 23-56. So those names should be familiar. I mean, those should pass the sniff test, sniff test of anybody who knows their diamond cards. And then in, in uh, once you get down to bronze, there aren't a lot of people playing those bronze cards in leagues. So all of those sample sizes yeah. are small. So I don't have a lot of bronze. Yeah. But I'll tell you one experiment I did do. Since I'm not a tournament player, I haven't been in PTCS uh, much at all really uh so i decided well those cards look really good and since they give the same one out same ones out for iron as they do for the top leagues i think i said i think i'll uh enter some iron tournaments enter a few near the end of the month and see if i can make ptcs iron so i used this model downloaded some iron, I entered a few iron tournaments, downloaded the iron data into this model. Now it was its own closed spreadsheet. And then developed a roster using this model from the tournaments that I played. And guess what? I qualified for PTCS and iron. And I think I only played, you know, a dozen tournaments. Um, but I actually was able to use this model for tournaments because I created a closed database of exactly those kind of tournaments with that kind of run environment with those players. So it can, can be used for tournaments, but you know, remember it's, it's not gonna be as satisfying to the players who wanna be right on top of things because as Charles does with his um, making projections based on the back of the card data, which you can do in real time. I, I set my rosters based on historical performance data that has to be accumulated over time and then matched up against the other players in the pool with their historical performance data. Um, so that takes time and a critical mass of data to be able to do that successfully and so it works in league play is it up? wouldn't work in tournaments and and just to clear up when you're when you're showing these players as hitters or pitchers it's only in this case if it's a two-way player only they're hitting statistics pitching yeah statistics good, good, have nothing. good good point so if you look at that monty ward card that we talked about on your team let's see where did i have you sorted over here so Monty Ward, and this should make the point, 
has a hitting rating uh, of 2339. When we looked at Monty Ward as a pitcher, he had a totally different rating. So it takes into consideration yeah, that, his performance as a hitter against the other hitters in league play, whereas the pitching one takes into consideration his performance as a pitcher against the other pitchers in the pool. So that's really cool, too. All right. And Dishnet with breaking news. Breaking. We have a teaser for the new content set coming out on Thursday. Woohoo! I don't know what it is unless uh, unless someone posted in chat here we do have the new content set again we have our pre-hype show uh 40 an hour before dish starts on thursday so make sure you tune into that and uh what is that new teaser set i'm sure can't, someone can't wait to watch soon. guess the set with evc yeah and guess yeah, the we set haven't... tomorrow with have you ever won that yet have you won any packs on that no i don't think i've gotten any answers correct <laughs> <laughs> but but I don't I don't do his guest set anymore because I don't have a theme team and I don't think that would be fair oh. to to his viewers. I still watch his stream and I still support his stream, but I, I I don't have a theme team, so I don't compete for the prizes, if you will. But aren't, aren't we do live awards and we're do what a baseball reference four maybe mission and be interesting to see what we get this week. Well, let's uh, let's go check out. On this week, we launch our newest content program, PT Elite, which focuses on notable players from the 2023 season. So that would be like the right. live awards, maybe. Or maybe yeah, new cards for those players, huh? Hmm. So I think we'll cool. see maybe new Otani. Maybe uh, we'll see, uh, I don't know, uh, Justin Verlander. I, I, I don't know Acuna. who's in contention for all these Yep. but looks looks pretty cool looks pretty exciting so hang on to your live cards that might be involved in missions just in case there are some missions that go along with these uh chat any questions about specific batters that you want some more information on we'll keep chess here for maybe another five or ten minutes before you can also we have reach to out run. to me on and, discord yeah reach out to chess on discord he can help you out and kind of analyze the team a little bit and again we're looking at how you can be successful up to diamond uh, after that you know you kind of listen to warbot and listen to is and kidneys and these other modelers that focus a lot more on the perfect team meta but we're looking to to get you up to at least diamond and even into the playoffs so if there are any questions about specific players fire them off in the chat and i'm going to bring up my batters again so now i need definitely get rid of Reggie, get rid of Dustin Ackley. Can you sort by, is it easy to sort by position? So let's say I'm looking for a second baseman because I don't have any really true second baseman on my team here. And I want yeah. a second baseman that's like 2350 or higher. That can easily right. be done on your spreadsheet. Yeah. So if you, if you sort on the position column on my spreadsheet, you'll get all the ones together that have second base as their first position. But if Dustin Ackley was in the set you were looking at, he'd come, he'd be sorted by for first base because that position cell is, you know, one cell with one set of data. So it would give you alphabetical order based on that. Okay. So the ones that have second base okay. as their primary position, yes. But well, you can also scan the ones that you own and see which positions that they, they play as well. So we'll get you to bring it up one more time, I'm, uh, Chess Safari, and just do a couple more uh, comments here, user questions. Uh, okay. D, D Mendro's asking Joe Sewell versus Troy Glouse. Now, yours does okay. take in fielding as well, because Joe Sewell's mainly like a shortstop, oh. I think. Oh, absolutely, um, because the, the basic data that you download in the sortable stats from um, OOTPB includes war, and war has uh, both defensive and offensive elements to it. That's why I use that statistic. So defense is inherently in all of these numbers relative 
to all of the other players. So, but yes. I guess it wouldn't it wouldn't evaluate Sewell as a third baseman compared to shortstop, right? You don't have two different numbers. Oh no! Uh, no, and neither does the uh, sortable statistics that you get from, uh, well, at least that I download. Maybe there's a way to parse that within, uh, w- within the sortable stats, and uh, perhaps Charles or somebody is Dafo can share how to do that. But for me, I just download the WAR, which is combined for all yeah. of their positions. That's a good question, but okay. Um, is Let's take a look at the two in terms of their their uh, yellow rating. Then Glouse versus Joe Sewell. All right, so let me put. And you know, Isadolfo says you don't need defense at third base anyway, so it doesn't matter. Joe Sewell can play there fine, according to Is. <laughs> uh, I I that lean more towards uh, just my personal opinion. I le- lean more towards Charles on that particular subject. I have great respect for Isadolfo, but. Uh, I'm on Charles's <laughs> side on that one. I think third base is an important position. Uh, not as important as, short, as middle infield or center field, but certainly it's important. Um, anyway, uh, you want me to share my screen again, right? Okay. Yeah. I'm an old guy. I'm starting to get tired. And again, well, we'll take, we'll take one more question after that. If you have any more player comparison you want to do that the chess safari can bring up, uh, we'll definitely do that. So Sewell versus Glouse. Actually, Sewell versus Glouse brings up an interesting topic. I, I'm guessing it's Sewell, but I'll find the actual data. So my way of uh, doing all the missions, and I have substantially every mission completed, except for the, you know, the Aaron uh, Immortal and the, the latest Negro Leagues that have come out. I have basically every mission completed on a budget. But the way I do that is each mission reward card that I get, I sell for top dollar and then use the proceeds to complete more missions. So two weeks ago, I got I earned Kershaw, sold him for 450,000 points immediately, and then used that 450,000 points to complete other miss- missions, including Sewell. And then I sold Sewell. So I wind up not keeping any of these good players. Eventually I might buy one back, but it means the Aaron mission that requires all nine of those, you know, really top tier cards. I'm never going to complete that, but it's my way of building all of the missions and getting a lot of good cards without putting any real money into the game. Anyway, I'm assuming Sewell's oh, better, I but I sold him right away. Now let me find him. Um, you know, you mentioned the story about uh, my gloves card online, uh, which is that when I did pull him, I put him in the, I was going to sell him right away and I put him in the lineup and he got three home runs in his first three at bats against Carl Hobble. Okay. So here's Sewell. He's 25, 25 and Glouse has come back down to earth for me after those first three at bats. I still own him. I didn't sell him. But he's now at twenty four forty six. So they're they're both playable in uh, diamond for sure. But uh, Sewell is the better player, based you know based on limited sample size because they're both fairly rare at our level because they're the immortal reward cards. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think that's what the chess does. He sells high and then buys low if, if I want them back later. A little bit later on. Yeah, so so those yeah. players that I've sold, I can still track their their ratings if they play in the leagues that I play in. And then if one does really, yeah. really well, like this Brett, for example, maybe I'll decide to go and buy him back. I haven't bought anybody back yet, uh, but somebody like a Henderson or a Ivan Rodriguez or, or a Clemente, if I didn't keep them, if I had sold them, to mine their uh, overpriced points. Um, how does those a question from to buy back now? I'm, so, I'm sorry. Go ahead. How does uh, Dragon is asking? How does your model handle DH if you're using WAR? Well, it, it doesn't. So, like, like I said earlier, it, it does not differentiate between positions. But for my purposes, my purposes 
to use them in league play with hundreds of thousands in many cases, and certainly, you know, 40, 50,000 or more plate appearances, the difference between whether they're playing as a DH or playing in the field doesn't matter a lot. I assume that most players at the levels that I'm playing uh, utilize their players in an optimal way. So if David Ortiz 99 is best as a DH, that's how they're going to use them. Um, so I, I don't worry. I get the bottom line is I don't worry about it. Uh, I, I've looked at it and tried to tinker with the algorithm to account for it. It's just too much work for the benefit I would get at the margin. Yeah. You know, I already spend right. ten, 10 hours a day every, every day playing this game and, you know, yeah. I have to stop digging. One more time, bring it up, Jess. I know, I know she closed it, but bring it up one more time. Uh, oh. One more time. Cause I want you to look at two things. Uh, sure. Put your players in alphabetical order. We have a few cards that there's one of every version, iron all the way up to perfect. I'm just curious if we can look at a block of, let's say, Jackie Robinson, Roberto Clemente, and oh, just sure. see how their scores, their ELO scores, compare with their different levels. All right, so let's take Clemente. I think I've got all of him uh, ranked. Oops. It's a, a good uh, good way to look at it. I've done that myself. Uh, there are some outliers, like, uh, let's say, Scott Rowland, um, and also I think Ken Lee Jansen, who defy what you would predict. Chipper Jones as well. His 88 is better than his 98. But Clemente, he, you know, he, he's pretty consistent. He's 2,500, the perfect card. 2,343, the diamond card. 2,193 is gold. So his gold falls off. And there's still 44,000 uh, plate appearances. So relatively speaking, Clemente's gold does not perform as well as his diamond and, uh, and perfect. In fact, his bronze, 66, is almost as good. And his uh, silver, 77, is about the same as the bronze. And even the, the 53 Clemente is pretty decent. They're all over 2,000. Um, you know, they're still below average for the whole pool of cards. But in Diamond, uh, you know, if you if you had a team that was competing with Diamond, Bronze, or, or um, Iron cards, those do pretty well relative to the other, uh, I'm sorry, Silver, Bronze, and Iron cards. Those do pretty well. In relation to the others in their same overall yeah. categories. So that was Clemente. Um, um, who did I want to show? Roland, maybe? Jackie Robinson. I'll show it because we're Jackie have, Robinson. Oh, Jackie Robinson. Okay. Well, Robinson and Roland are near each other anyway. So here's the Jackies. Um, so uh, 100 Jackie. Where did I put 100 Jackie? Oh, 100 Jackie is here. He's 24-12. So um, 99 Jackie is 22-14. Um, and then there's you can see for yourself the other Jackies below. I, I'm so, Let me sort them so that they're together. First name. Last name. Okay, now they should be together. There we go, yeah. What would you say? Is gold like you said 2350 to be you know, semi successful in diamond, competitive in diamond 2350? How about gold? Is there a, a 2275 for gold and for silver? 2275 for silver 2225. Ideally, I don't want to have anybody below 2200, either pitcher or hitter, on uh, any of the teams in those leagues, unless they're brand new. And I have um, relatively few batters faced or plate appearances. By relatively few, I mean less than 20,000. And some other indication that they might be better than what the data set is showing so far. Other indication right. being Chat. that uh, Kidneys thinks it's good. Except for Tom Needenfewer. Yeah. Everybody that Kidneys 
his thought is was good has turned out to be good in my mind. So <laughs> I try to collect yeah. all the data uh, from everybody else as well as the data from me or the analysis, I should say, from everyone else as well as my own analysis and kind of put that all together right. and run with it. That's part do of mind, playing the game. Do you, mind, do you mind just ranking by your current Charbonneau team just to see? Because you said you are above 500 in Diamond. Well, last time and I looked, I could. There's there's a, a real uh, set of whale teams in uh, in my diamond league. There's there's one team that has an eight eight fifty nine all time winning percentage. It's in my division that I've already played six times, and there are I think four eight? former perfect league teams that are in my diamond league this week. So I'm struggling. But Is the last time I bot? looked, I was I was three games above five hundred having played that uh, whale team six times already. Okay, so this is my, these are my hitters. The green one, green links are the ones that are actually on the roster at You're the moment. sharing your screen here. You need to reshare. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at it. <laughs> I make that mistake all the time. Don't yeah. worry. Well. Yeah, uh, when percentage of 859 you showed me the screenshot of that team and they won rookie stone iron silver gold like they've won every single level and now they're in not diamond. not just one when they when they won rookie they were 159 and four when they when they won what? stone they were 155 and seven I mean, it's just oh. unbelievable so somebody you know somebody must have put five or ten thousand dollars in at the beginning of the game made all the missions, bought all the best cards and just went from there, which is that team is now in diamond and it's uh, I think 22 and nine in diamond already. Last time I looked in my, di and he's in my division, okay, before, unfortunately. Uh, well, I assume it's a, before you talk about your, before you talk about your team, I want to remind people that tuned in late chess safari uses the ELO modeling system, which is used in chess backgammon, many other, areas that they use this he's come up with his own kind of formulas and ways that he calculates the score which of course is is you know his way of doing it that works for him and he is on a relatively small budget this is not a free to play team but it's a relatively he mentioned earlier about a hundred dollars a month that he spreads amongst all his teams and he's got six teams right now so it's not a huge amount of money that he's putting in and using this system to be competitive in diamond right now. So he's not, you know, spending tons of money. He's not a big whale. He's doing it by buying low, selling high, opening packs, all those other things, completing missions. And this is his team that he's showing you on screen with their ELO scores. So maybe talk a little bit about players that are successful for you and your ELO has helped contribute to that. Okay, so on the screen is are the hitters, and uh, the way the way I code it, all these columns to the right of the rating are my different my six different teams, and my main team is the Lynx. That's the one that's in Diamond. That's probably the one I've you know invested the most time and money in into. The ones that have a green Lynx with the white lettering, those are the ones that are currently on my uh, active roster. At the beginning of the season, yesterday morning, Sunday night, um, the top 13 were there, um, modified a little bit for position. But I've since benched Santo and Cash, uh, Yount and Tulowitzki and brought up some other players, which are down here. So I, I keep track of who's in and who's not in. Uh, I bench those players if they're not performing well in my home ballpark that I've picked for that week. So I may favor left-handed over right-handed in a certain week, or my opponents might be, might have pitchers that are, uh, it's more favorable if I, um, let's say, uh, substitute Joe Carter as the catcher for Bresnahan or, you know, somebody else. So, but right now my best players that I have in are the mortal Ricky, uh, Pudge Rodriguez is the catcher, and that hundred Clemente that 
we've had all season. That still plays really, really well. And as mentioned earlier, I still have the Klaus, the Klaus, Troy Klaus, and uh, for sentimental reasons because of that three home run game in his first appearance. And uh, I use Cupid Childs. I just just won him in a mission, which is really cool. And he seems to be playing well. Um, the long-term players that you can tell by the big sample sizes, I'm, I'm using the 100 Jackie. He still performs. Although I have Hornsby and I have um, uh, Napoleon Lajaway. So Jackie probably will get less playing time. The benefit of Jackie is it also plays left field. But now that I have the Ricky, I don't need Jackie in left field as much. Um, so th those green ones are the ones I have now. Um, that's, those aren't the best cards in the game. The best cards in the game, whoops, those are the worst cards in the game. The best cards in the game are these. Um, so I have three of the players over 2,500. And when I say best cards in the game, I'm saying best cards based on performance in diamond, gold, and silver relative to each other. So, you know, if I if I could afford to buy back Brad or K-Line, um, I would do that. But I can't, so I don't. Um, so there are, you know, if I still wanted to upgrade my team, it would be a matter of, putting aside the points to purchase some of these cards, the soul that we talked about earlier would be an upgrade um, for my team. So it's not that I can't make my team better, but given the cards that I have in my inventory, um, this is the system I use to decide that. And same with pitchers. If I go to my pitching staff, uh, the, the pitching spreadsheet and sort that by First by rating, and then by my team, my main team. The green ones are the ones that I have in right now. The Kofax that I'm using is the Immortal, and the page that I'm using is the Immortal. I don't have the limited edition Kofax. I do have the Negro League page, and I, since he's... He's a good performer, too. I rotate him in and out. One, one of the tricks I use is when Paige pitches and gets really tired, I'll take him out of the lineup and put the other Paige in, and I could actually start him right away without waiting, having to wait for um, the first Paige to get rested. I feel that's a little bit of poor sportsmanship, so I don't do that often. But maybe at the end of the year when I need to win a game to avoid relegation, I might do something like that. Um, so the only, only player that would surprise you that is on my, uh, reserve roster at the moment is this urban shocker. He's known to be a good tournament player, but he's also a really good league player. He's up there with some of the hundreds and ahead of all of the diamonds, except for Pettit no, and the, the new Nolan Ryan based on my data anyway. So. And then uh, below Glavin on this list, I don't use anybody on my uh, okay. diamond roster. And, you know, then I can sort Just my other teams as well, like that. But go ahead. Just to clear up some uh, confusion in chat, there are a bunch of people talking about the Robin Yount that you showed. Now, though, there's two Robin Younts. There's the, the Tops one, which has been out for a long time, and then there's the Immortal one. Now, is this? So yeah, this a combination. Of yeah, the two, yeah, yeah. Or is it just just the tops? Yeah, it, ha it has to be. So as I said earlier, yeah, I don't have a two up on the hitters, but I'll put one there right now. The uh, that's a flaw in how I built the model originally because I did not download the IDs. Um. So when there are two players out, then uh, it it compromises the data somewhat but you know he's got a 2400 rating and if anything the new yount is better than the old yount so if i have the new yount which i do it's not going to hurt my team to use him and i just leave it at that right and i know there was a comment that you know the the top yount is not very good anymore however this is this is 
this is right from the beginning, all the data when he was much better. So that's kind of inflating his score a little bit, right? Over time, that would come down because the old Yount is not as good. Yeah. Then the new Yount is better, so it's going to pick it up again. Yeah. I'm guessing if the new Yount was by himself, he'd have a rating in the 2200s. Um, and that's why next year I'm going to change how I do this model. So the immortal Yount's probably in the high 2400s, maybe even 2500. This is a combination yeah. of the two. And, uh, yeah. you know, okay. I don't want to oversimplify it, but the fact that I use the ELO system, pretty soon that old data is irrelevant. It doesn't even enter into the equation anymore. So if, if the new yeah. Yount is the one that gets used mostly as the coming weeks go by and the old Yount doesn't get used, the old Yount isn't even going to matter anymore because he's his impact on the calculation is going to be insignificant. That's just the way the ELO system works. If somebody wants to know more about that system, I, I recommend the Wikipedia page to that. They, uh, whoever wrote that page and has kept it updated did a really, really good job. But I warn you, it's not a simple concept. In theory, it's simple because you're using a closed pool of players and their performance over time against each other. But uh, when you get into the details, it actually can become quite uh, cumbersome, if not complicated. But it works, you know, works for chess as an example, because in, in my experience as a tournament chess player over the years, I've played five-year-olds and six-year-olds and eight-year-olds and 13-year-olds. And as they get stronger, get older and get stronger, um, you know, they get better a lot faster than somebody middle-aged or elderly like me. And you need a system that accounts for that. And, uh, that's why the ELOMS, ELO system is so important in that setting and why, what gave me the idea to utilize it for my league play in OTPB. What would you consider yourself as chess player like in in terms of rating is that something that people share or not <laughs> am i invading on your privacy asking you what your your level is okay so for so for most of my life i was a international correspondence player i played by mail before computers were uh, as strong as they are um, and I played for the United States against players from all over the world, Australia, Japan, Germany, whatever. And my international um, correspondence rating was 2367, which is, you know, it's chess master level. I've been a chess master in correspondence play since 1975, a very long time. Um, my highest rating I ever achieved over the board was 2006, which is considered expert. But I... Before, so we didn't talk about this, but I had a stroke in 1978. Before my stroke, um, I didn't have time to play in tournaments because I was a, a hospital administrator professionally. I had, so I didn't play in over the board tournaments. I played by mail. After my stroke, I would go to tournaments and I occasionally would beat a master, but then I would lose to an eight-year-old kid because the games would be really, really long and I didn't have the physical stamina. I remember one little kid saying to me after he beat me, I don't know, it was like a five hour game and I was kicking his rear end early in the game, but finally lost to him. And he looked me in the eye and he said, Mr. Long games make you tired. <laughs> and he, he wasn't <laughs> kidding. So I have excuses, but uh, my, my peak over the board rating is expert and my peak international rating is is master oh um, yeah i love chess what, I, what would you, you know. say just a little bit a little bit of chess talk because I, I mean i played a little bit of chess but i'm probably like a hobby player in terms of my ELO. what do you what would you say is the biggest mistake chess players make there's got to be something that stands out as the biggest error taking up the game in the first place <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm I'm kidding. Um, they spend too much time on openings, trying to memorize how to begin the game, and not enough time on the fundamentals, which are tactics and end games. That stuff is 
more difficult to study and practice the, the end games and the tactics, but much, much more important. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I could talk a lot about this and maybe someday a separate stream, yeah. but uh, yeah, that's, that's a simple answer to your question. Too much time on openings, not enough time mm -hmm. on tactics and end games. And the higher you get up when these guys play each other, you get a lot more draws or stalemates in chess, um, or you still have a lot of winners. Well, the the top levels, okay, the world class players, sure, but you know, uh, you, oh, you've got a chart there. So, you know, the the regular tournament players, which are everybody from uh, A down to F, or A down to E, um, there aren't. You know, relatively speaking, there are a lot fewer draws. Now, what's happened since COVID is there's a lot more chess played online. So if you go to chess.com, which is one site, Lee Chess, L-I-C-H-E-S-S, -S, which is another site, gamenot.com, which is where I go, or the International Chess Club, all of which use the ELO system, by the way, and give you an immediate change in your rating. Um, if you go to those, you're not going to have many draws. Not many at all, yeah. you know, especially if you play faster time controls, meaning like five minute games, all right. or 10 minute games. Two more quick questions for you, Chess. Chess yeah. Safari on the show, going through ELO. Do you have a chess role model, whether it's someone that taught you the game, a professional player? Is there someone in the chess community that you just revere? Oh, yeah. Well, my my closest friend is also uh, my biggest role model, closest friend in chess, and that's Grandmaster Alex Yermolinsky, who lives right now in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh, he and I have traveled together. In fact, the last time we were together with another Grandmaster who was visiting from Germany, we went to a Red Sox Tigers game in Detroit. <laughs> we did that together. Um, so Alex Yermolinsky is a uh, multiple-time U.S. champion. He's won the World Open, I think, five times. He's a great chess teacher, and uh, he's the answer to your question. Now, equally, I'm equally fond of the world's greatest female chess player, uh, who is a woman by the name of Susan Power. Susan Polgar, sorry, Susan. Susan was just recently inducted into the World Chess Hall of Fame, which is in St. Louis, previously inducted into the U.S. Chess Hall of Fame, but now she's in the World Chess Hall of Fame. She's one of the famous Polgar sisters. Um, I am lucky enough to know her really well, and if you want to know how well, she has an upcoming autobiography coming out next year, and uh, all you got to do is look in the index for my IRL name, which is pretty easy to find. In fact, it's cool. embedded in one of my uh, OOTPB member names for one of my teams. <laughs> okay, last question, and then I'm going to let you run mention, here, and I'm going to You didn't even back. mention that none of those were my real sport. My real sport was distance running, but we don't have time today to get into oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that you, was my first visit to Canada was because of my distance running. I finished yeah, in the top 25 in the in Canadian, you. yeah, Canadian National Marathon Championship. And, yeah, in uh, St. Hyacinth, Quebec. And from there, we visited Montreal, oh. which wasn't far away, during the Expo 67. Also so visited before Jerry Park team, before senior. they – I'm sorry, uh, nice. Flap. I'm jumping on you. I, it's just because I'm tired. I don't usually no, it's do okay. that. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Might be a little bit of a old, lag. So old games and old streams good. make you tired, Mister. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just wear them down. Wear them down eventually. Last question. Favorite Red Sox player? We've got some Red Sox fans in the chat. Tony Canigliaro. Tony Canigliaro was Ooh. my hero as a kid. Oh, um, he died at a very young age. Unfortunately, okay. he, you can, you, you know, he played many seasons. You can look him up. I saw him hit his first major league home run in 1964 uh, at Fenway Park or his first home field home run, 1964. 
Um, I watched him play in high school in Swampscott, Massachusetts. He was really good. My player render from my pro baseball experience player right now, Ted Woofington Jr., is Tony Canigliaro. Um, he wasn't my first hero. My first hero was Ted Williams, but I was little then. But my real hero was Tony C. Um, not known to a lot of people because he died so young and he didn't. He didn't play long enough to have a Hall of Fame career. He was struck in the face in August 1967 by a fastball before they had flap helmets and uh, never was the same player after that. Wow. All right, Chet, give it up for Chess Safari. Thank you so much for being on the show, Chess. Uh, wealth of information. Reach out to Chess on Discord if you want more information on the EL system and of course we're going to send you off with a little yep oh, thank you yep. i'm always willing to help always willing to help no 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 all right guys back after the break for our last draw and then we'll send you over mr dinos thank you All right, we're here to close off the show. Before we do that, let's take a quick look at the bounty and uh, where we're at. Again, congratulations again to Lord Christic, winner of the five packs for knocking me out. And now the remaining five packs are going to go to either Warbot or to the Cancel Pin Bowlers, our two finalists in the uh, stream today. So Candle Pin Bowlers have taken game one by a score of 11 to 2. Charles, ooh, 11 to 2. Uh, Charles now has to win two in a row in order to take the tournament and win the five extra pack. So good luck to the Boilers. Not like you need it. You uh, swept the Rain Years, the team that beat me, and you also swept the Ghost Ships, and uh, you, you took Ezra down two games to one so you've uh you've been on quite the roll for the bowlers there run by uh, k carlton lassiter 
So K. Carlton Lassiter and Charles, the two teams in the finals. All right, K. Lassiter, I don't know if you declared that you're in in the chat. I don't remember seeing your name. So if you are in the chat, just let me, let me know that you're here, that you are part of the stream today and part of the bounty. And I'll have to check your team, of course, to see if you followed the, uh, the deal or no deal should you win the tournament. Can't count out Charles quite yet. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, thanks to Chess Safari. Just love listening to the community, love listening to other ideas and uh, ways that they play the game. As Erie mentioned as well. And of course, we've got one more set of five packs to give away. Let's finish that off right now. Exclamation enter, exclamation ticket. You've only got a few seconds left. And we are going to close that off. So winners so far, we've had Lord Christic with the bounty. We've had Mr. Ree and we had CM with the random draws. Our last winner today is Blue Star, Blue or Blue Tester, sorry, Blue Tester. So Blue Tester, I think I've given away packs to you before, but again, just so I have everything in one place, if you can send me the whisper as always, and uh, we will get those packs to you at some point in time. Well, guys, it's been fun. I am back again on Thursday with the three amigos with myself. EVC will give you an update on the guest set contest, which is going to have on his stream tomorrow. So tune into EVC tomorrow. Uh, D Block Dragon is running a three day stream. He's going to be on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. He's uh, going to stream the PTCS on, on Saturday as he did last time when he finished second in bronze. So check out D Block Dragon and uh, back Thursday for the Hype Show at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We've got award set for 2023 coming out on Thursday. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Chess Safari. Again, we're here for a good time, not a long time. So have a good time. The sun can't shine every day. We'll see you next episode. Time. Not a long time. So have a good time.